Hello, my name is Andrew and I'm a third year PhD student in the Department of Computer Science at the University of California, Irvine. I'm here today to present my work, SmartSpec Customizable Smart Space Datasets via Event-Driven Simulations. Today, we live in a world that is becoming increasingly sensorized with the Internet of Things, enabling many different applications and improving societal quality of life. You can see this from healthcare to find people in need, to safety to identify potential hazards, and more. It's clear that these environments generally stand much to gain from instrumentation, from energy efficiency and sustainability, yielding real energy savings, to adaptability in dynamic conditions like fire. To realize these benefits, a number of system level to application level research challenges need to be addressed, some of which include heterogeneity, scalability, portability, and robustness. There's a lot of interest in these problems from enabling efficient data exchange to developing sensor-based smart applications. However, realistic data is necessary to test and validate these approaches in order to explore various properties such as the robustness of algorithms, failure testing, scalability testing, and operation in extreme scenarios, among others. <clears throat> However, there are several challenges in obtaining real data. The first is the purchase and deployment of sensors. Specifically, buying hundreds of sensors to instrument in a building can be very costly. On top of this, deciding which sensors to place and where is an open research problem. Then, supposing that the building has been sensorized, recruiting participants to volunteer their data can be difficult. Participants can be reluctant to share data if they don't trust the collecting party. In addition, collecting data can be time consuming for the participant, and therefore the resulting data set will oftentimes be limited in scale. This is also intimately tied with the preservation of participant privacy. Even if real data is collected, data regulations and policies can prevent the sharing of such data due to the risk of leaking private, sensitive information about the people within the smart space. To address these problems, offline uh, modeling and simulation techniques are often used to explore complex scenarios. However, this comes with its own set of challenges. First, semantics of corresponding smart space components must be properly modeled, which can be difficult due to factors such as the variability and dynamicity of people and their activities. In addition, modeling must be faithful to reality and obey semantic constraints of the smart space. From the perspective of a researcher, how can this be done? Well, one way is to extend a previously captured data set by replicating or modifying parts of the data. The issue with doing this is that it can easily violate physical laws of causality. For example, a person may suddenly appear on the fifth floor of a building without first visiting the, the, the lower floors. Additionally, exploring applicability to new different spaces is difficult. To avoid this issue, one might opt to generate data randomly based on sensor models. However, meaningful evaluation may not be possible with random data. A third approach is then to create a data set based on the interactions of people and their activities. There's been much past research in this area from modeling uh, activities of daily living to mo uh, mobility models and trajectory models to more recent endeavors such as training complex generative adversarial networks or GANs. However, an issue with the state, these state of our approaches is that of ex semantic explainability, a term that we introduced to ask specifically, why do people move to the spaces that they do? To address these issues, we present SmartSpec, an event-driven approach that exploits semantics to generate realistic synthetic smart space data sets. In SmartSpec, we aim to generate realistic data by observing what happens in an instrument smart space, extracting out relevant concepts to produce a synthetic data set, which can then be used in a variety of different applications. In SmartSpec, we will present a semantic model of the relevant entities in the smart space. The semantic model is then going to be used by the scenario learning component of our, com of our system to learn different patterns from an initial data set collected from the smart space. These extracted patterns will then be passed to the scenario generation component of smart spec, which addresses how new data can be generated in a more semantic manner. After a new synthetic smart space data set is extracted, we look to assess the realism of the data set with a focus on determining whether the generated data is realistic. We will conclude the talk by looking at some experimental results from two different scenarios and showcase our tool in use. In SmartSpec, we characterize a smart space using four basic concepts that are highly interrelated with one another. First, spaces which constitute the geographical layout of the smart space are occupied by people who represent the inhabitants of spaces, and these people attend events which represent the activities of people, and these events are uh, going back to spaces, they're, they're hosted in spaces. We characterize spaces by their coordinates, capacity, and set of adjacent, spa or set of adjacent spaces. For people, um, for people, affinity describes the person's likelihood of attending a certain type of event. For example, a student might be more inclined to take 
uh, to attend a lecture event over a seminar event. And then the time profile of a person, on the other hand, uh, this describes the, the times for which a person enters or exits a smart space on any given day. For events, attendance describes the amount of people that can attend an event. For example, a lecture may just have one professor, but up to 200 students, and the, uh, the attendance log is there to uh, capture this semantic constraint. The time profile of an event describes when the event occurs, especially if it's, in peri especially if it's periodic in nature. All of these entities are observed by sensors that are either in the space or carried around by people. Uh, we characterize sensors by their coverage range and their sensing interval. In smart spec, we first assume that spaces and sensors are provided a priori um, because they are more static in nature. Then the basic input that we have for smart spec takes the simplest possible data set as a seed, which encodes this uh, set of um, observed events in people. The scenario learning component will then analyze the C data to learn different patterns and extract out models for events and people. This is done in two steps, the event learner and the people interaction or people event interaction learner. We learn events in smart spec through occupancy, an intermediate concept to estimate when one event ends and another starts. The key idea that we exploit is that event occupancies change near the end of events as people come and go, but will stay relatively consistent during the middle of an event. We assume that C data in Smart spec records the presence of people in spaces. In our case, we have Wi Fi connectivity data sets. Formally, these data sets consist of three tuples of a person P occupying a space C at some daytime DT. Let's first look at how defining the occupancy of, or let's first look at how we define the occupancy of a space and how it's computed. Given this C data set, we start by selecting the associated data, date times and people for a specific space C, in this case, uh, space 1100. Then we define the occupancy lambda as the number of unique people from dataset D that are in space C during the time period TSTE. For example, if our time period spans two minutes, then we find one person is uh, in the data uh, in 1100 between 843 and 845, three people between 845 and 847, and four people between 847 and 849. A time series of occupancy can be then created by varying the time period TSTE over all the different date times found. In this case, we have a time series of one, three, four, dot, dot, dot. We use the occupancy extracted for a given space to characterize the existence of an event. First, we start by extracting the time series of occupancy as was described before for each space C and each date D. Then to capture this idea of events switching off when there are large changes in occupancy, we rely on another algorithm, the change point detection algorithm. This algorithm typically has roots more in digital signal processing, but it addresses the idea of, or the issue of finding when one event ends and a new one starts. The intuition for change point detection is just as mentioned. The change point detection algorithm is going to detect these breakpoints, which are going to be times where the, there are large changes in occupancy. Then by going through each space C and date D, this process will give us a set of all events in the smart space. However, in creating new synthetic data, we also wish to learn about the different types of events in the smart space. For example, how many lectures there are, how many office hours, et cetera. This is going to be used later in the scenario generation component. To get a sense of the types of events present in the smart space, we are going to apply an ML clustering technique, agglomerative clustering, to group events of similar nature. For example, this is going to group all lectures together and all office hours together, et cetera. The high level intuition of agglomerative clustering is that each event starts in its own cluster and then is iteratively merged with other nearby clusters to create groups of events. This is going to be done until a certain distance threshold epsilon is reached. Using the set of learned events, we also wish to learn about the people attending such events. The set of attendees for each learned event can be traced back from the seed data set. For example, if we know that an event occurs from 3 to 4 p.m in a space C, then we can query the C data set to find all the associated attendees. With this, we can characterize people based on the events that they attend. We also wish to learn the different profiles of people present for use in the scenario generation component as well. For this, we once again apply agglomerative clustering to group people of similar nature. For both events and people, we compare the similarity of attendance and affinity using the Jacquard index as defined. Here, we or the interpretation for the Jacquard index is, a, is that it's a ratio that is closer, closer to one for more similar sets. For, for people, this means that if the set of events that they attend are similar, then the Jacquard index is going to be higher. For events, if the, atten the set of attendees are more similar, then the, Jacquard, or then the ratio is going to be higher for that. 
The next step after learning of these events and people is going to be scenario generation. This is going to be comprised of two different parts. The entity generator, which generates a new set of events and people to simulate, and the synthetic data generator, which produces synthetic data. The entity generator takes the types of data and profiles of people learned from the scenario learning component and uses them to create specific events and people. For events, we start by selecting the type of event to create. For example, a new lecture event or a new study event. This is going to be, this is going to be done with probability proportional to the number of events in the clustered group. Then we ask when and where should this event take place? This is, done, this is done by looking at the other events in this event type. Finally, we determine the types of or attendees allowed to attend the event. Intuitively, if, a, if, uh, if class events have 20, 23 people, 22 people, et cetera, and they all happen to be students, um, then we can find a sample mean and standard deviation to pass as parameters for a normal distribution. This normal distribution can then be sampled to find a maximum number of each type of attendee allowed. Combining this information together, we have a newly generated event. For people, the process is going to be analogous. We start by selecting a profile of a person to generate. This is then asked, uh, this is then followed by asking when the person should be entering or exiting from the smart space. This is done by looking at the rest of the people in the same pro profile of, people, or, uh, of the person. For affinity, we simply average the events attended by others of the same people profile because the, the big idea is that um, pro, or people in the same profile will have the same behavior. This generates a new person. Finally, moving on to the synthetic data generator, the goal is going to be able to use these four models of spaces, sensors, events, and people to generate a realistic data set that abides by the semantic rules of the given smart space. Our algorithm comes in six main steps. First, for each person P, we look at P's time profile, which indicates the days and times that they would be in the smart space. A person's day can then be abstracted to them thinking about which event to attend. Intuitively, a person will go to one event, then decide on where to go for the next event, and then the next event after that, etc. We note that in our formulation for time profiles, we allow events to be periodic in nature so that they occur multiple times in a week. Thus, we add in this notion of uh, people preferring to attend previous events with higher probability than selecting a new event to attend. If a person does not have any previous events to attend, then they're just going to find a new event. When a person decides to select this new event, we have to make sure that all the semantic constraints uh, for the person attending events are not violated. This includes things like the capacity of spaces that cannot be exceeded, and the, uh, looking at the attendance of events that should be followed, for example, one professor and 20 students for a small discussion classroom. If an event is found, then we also need to make sure that the person is able to reasonably attend the event. We estimate their time or, or their estimated travel, or travel time to their to that event and make sure that it's within some threshold epsilon. Once an event is chosen, the person will move to the, to the event space while obeying space constraints, namely capacity, and the results are going to be recorded as appropriate. This process is going to produce a synthetic data set. So given this data set, is a synthetic data set faithful to reality? How do we assess its realism? We're going to address these questions next. Let's consider what we've done so far. We first had a data set D consisting of three tuples as shown from which the concept of sensors, people, events, and spaces were obtained. At a high level, this was then fed into a generator G to generate a data set, which we now call D prime. And so to assess realism, we first need to quantify the distance between D and D prime. And this is going to be done with respect to occupancies and trajectories. For a spaces occupancy, we start by extracting the time series of occupancy of each space in the data set. Then it becomes relatively straightforward to compare occupancies against one another. Simply, we use the mean squared error between uh, occupancies for our approach, and so the occupancy distance can be formalized as shown. For trajectories, this notion of similarity is a lot more difficult. We again start with two uh, data sets, D and D prime, and then to compare er, these uh, data sets with respect to trajectories, we need to first extract them out. Recall that a trajectory of a person P is a sequence of spaces visited by P over time. In terms of notation, let small delta di be a trajectory from the trajectory set delta d. This is, the, oh, this is going to be defined analogously for d prime. So given these trajectories, the question becomes whether we should be naively comparing these trajectories against each other. The answer is going to be no, and one reason for why we don't want to do this is the following. Suppose that in the, uh, in the set delta d, we have a trajectory made from a person that came into the smart space at 8 and left at, or it, uh, that came in at 8 a.m. and then left at 8 p.m. On the other hand, in the set delta d prime, 
we have a trajectory made from a person that came in at one and left at two. It's obvious that there's no real circumstance in which we want to compare these two trajectories against one another. So we introduced the idea of control variables V to partition the trajectories into comparable bins. For example, if we let V be the tuple of start and end time, TS and TE, then we are partitioning the trajectories into bins where the start and end time of the trajectory are similar. We're going to be visualizing this using a table. So given these tables, we need to introduce some distance metric between trajectories. Let this uh, let, let uh, phi be a function that takes in two trajectory sets and then returns a distance in between them. However, what, what does this even mean? Since we have multiple trajectories in each bin, uh, how do we compare each trajectory against uh, the trajectories in the other bin? Let's start, our, uh, let, let's start off simple and consider the case with one trajectory in each bin. So let's uh, kind of overload the definition of phi here and see that it's a function that takes in just two trajectories and then returns a distance in between them. There's a number of well-studied metrics that could fit here. So for example, edit distance, longest common subsequence, et cetera. But one that worked really well are, in terms of the distance function for us was the Frechet distance metric. The Frechet distance is a similarity metric between trajectories that can be defined as follows. Suppose that a person and their dog are walking respectively on two different trajectories. Then the Frechet distance between the, the person and the dog can be defined as the shortest leash length between the person and a dog such that they are both able to walk on each of their respective trajectories. Well, next, or, so then how do we extend this to be able to compare multiple trajectories against one another? Well, for this, we could introduce a minimum cost matching matrix that attempts to match each matrix in one set with at least one other matrix in the opposite set. Intuitively, this matching will try to minimize the total distance found between the two sets of trajectories, which means that, for example, in the trajectory set from one to one, we should have a total distance of zero, while the other should be greater. We define the trajectory's distance as follows. And note that we have a penalty term at the bottom to uh, penalize any difference in the sizes of the sets uh, delta dv and delta d prime v. Now, that, or now given the distance between data sets D and D prime, how, how can we determine whether the generator function G produces realistic data sets? We start by splitting the data set into multiple different parts, DI, um, which can represent something like the first week of data, the second week of data, the third week, et cetera. Then for each of these smaller data sets, we feed them into the generator G and produce K different synthetic data sets, which we call DIK prime. Here we assume that DI is going to be the seed from which DIK prime is generated. Since reality from one data set will differ from reality in a, different, uh, in a second data set, we first compare the distances between pairs of real data sets. Intuitively, this gives us an idea of how real data sets vary amongst themselves. Then for the comparison between real and simulated data, there's a few different options to consider, each of which should be interpreted differently. On one hand, if we compare DI with DIK prime, then it answers the question of how well synthetic data mimics the seed from which, from which it was produced. Otherwise, if we compare di with di plus one k prime, then we're answering the question of how well we've extracted patterns from one data set and applied them to the next. In both cases, we now have a distribution of real versus simulated data. And in these distributions can be compared against one another using other well-established metrics, for example, ANOVA. Moving to experiments, we evaluated smart spec using two real world scenarios. In the campus setting, we use Wi-Fi at connectivity events captured at UCI, which had 64 Wi-Fi access points. We use five weeks of data partitioned into one week periods in our evaluation. For the city scenario, we use GPS trajectory data collected by Microsoft Research Asia from a project called GeoLife. To convert GPS data to spaces, we identified 150 points of interest in Beijing and clustered the GPS data to the nearest one. In both datasets, we learned types of events and profiles of people in each scenario. One of the first things that we evaluated were the learned models from the campus scenario. Specifically, we identified 510 ground truth events in the campus building, ranging from classes and lectures to office hours and research meetings. We then made a best effort mapping back to Wi-Fi access points and compared the occupancy of the space learned or occupancy of the event learned in, in SmartSpec against the occupancy of the ground truth event. The key result from this experiment is that the majority of learned events have minimal differences in occupancy. The histogram on the right shows the differences in event occupancy and specifically that most of these differences are centered around zero. These differences can be explained by thinking about human behavior in attending events like classes as well. Specifically, if a class is scheduled to start at 10, then most people will go a little bit earlier, so it's a bit difficult to learn that an event will start exactly at 10. 
we can see this, for example, that the average paired difference in event start times is around 15 minutes, which represents the amount of time that people wait before attending the ground truth event. We also note that while we made a best effort attempt to find ground truth, it's impossible to capture every semantic event in the building because not all of these events are recorded. For example, people that stay in the lobby and just do work or people that just pass by. We also compare smart spec against real data and common er, er, against smart spec. Er, we also compare smart spec against real data and common human mobility model baselines. Each mobility model differs in how it selects the next space to visit. We compare these approaches based on the trajectory distance using the average paired Fréchet distance with control variables of the start and end time in half hour blocks and the occupancy distance using the average difference in occupancy over five minute intervals. Our results are averaged across three different simulations and compared against the next week for the campus scenario or the next month for the city scenario. Starting with the campus data set, the two tables show the average trajectory and occupancy distances, distances over, uh, over each evaluated week. On average, there is a 35% difference in the trajectory dis distances between smart spec and the real data set. There was a 36% difference in the occupancy counts per space between smart spec and the real data set. We find that for most of these, or for most of the evaluated mobility models, they did significantly worse. For the GeoLife data set, we present a box plot of the average trajectory distance and occupancy distance. Our results show that there's a 13% difference in the trajectory distances and a 37% distance difference in the occupancy counts per space between, or between smart spec and the uh, GeoLife data set. Interestingly, in Interestingly, the Brownian motion baseline model was able to produce trajectories similar to real data that had some significantly different occupancies. This is likely a result of the points of interest used in the city. All of the other mobility models do significantly worse. Lastly, we wanted to show a quick preview about how SmartSpec operates. There's a, there, there are multiple modes of operation and more details are available in the GitHub link below, but I want to showcase just a small mall scenario in the time that we have remaining. SmartSpec starts with the definition of spaces and sensors, such as the one that we have to the right. Then we look at a workflow going to 2B, which is, a scenario, which is the scenario learning component. Here, we need to insert the seed data into, the, into a database and run the scenario learning component. And then there are, sever, or there, there are, or there are several configurable, or configurable options for learning, as we can see on the right. After that, the entity generator is run, which uses the configuration file now for scenario generation. In this example, we generate 500 people and 5,000 events, as we can see at the top of the gener or, uh, at the top of the configuration file. Then the scenario generation component is run, um, specifically the synthetic data generator. The output looks something like what we have on the left hand side. However, since it's difficult to understand what's happening here, we have a short video to visualize what's happening in a in in the mall setting. We can see here that people are moving around in the, in the mall or they're visiting cafes and shops, et cetera. And in our setting, we make it so that the restaurants, which are the four um, large boxes in the center, they don't open until later around 11. And, we, and so we can see that no one is actually going there. Although we don't do this, we can also look at each person by themselves and note that we can find some semantic explainability for why people move. SmartSpec has also been used in other papers and contexts such as Tippers and Navwar Trident Warrior. The Tippers project aimed to design a robust experimental testbed to explore emerging privacy technologies with real world deployments. In this context, NAVWAR Trident Warrior looked at deploying Tippers on a Navy ship to explore the potential benefits of IoT technologies in, a nav in various naval use cases concerning the daily life of a sailor in both mission critical scenarios and non-mission critical scenarios on a Navy ship. Specifically, smart, our smart spec data generation was used to simulate the activities of sailors on the ship and use cases such as fall detection and energy management were examined. The key takeaways that I would like to conclude my talk on are that first, realistic and semantically explainable data are required to test and validate smart space approaches. To this end, we developed SmartSpec, which is an event-driven smart space simulator and data generator that produces the necessary smart space data sets using models of sensors, spaces, events, and people. We further learn profiles of people and types of events by utilizing ML technologies. And then we presented a new structured methodology that evaluates the realism of data sets. In our experiments, we show that SmartSpec is able to do 1.4 times to 4.4 times better than the, base, than the best baselines in generating both tra uh, trajectories and occupancies. As mentioned before, SmartSpec code is publicly available on GitHub. 
and thank you all for listening to my talk today.